What happens to the oxygen that's inside a jar that's floating in outer space? This was a question someone asked me on my Facebook page, and I'm not going to just give you a straight up answer right away. Instead, we're going to look at some scientific thinking and how any kind of question or problem might get solved by scientists. You probably can't take a jar into outer space, but there are some ways you can solve this problem right here on Earth using your own mind and the resources you have. First of all, what could you test right here on Earth? What kinds of things could you do to this jar to help you get some insight into how the air inside the jar or the oxygen would behave? And how, would you, how can you find out some properties about the jar itself that might be important or relevant? Another thing you can do is think about what the situation is like in outer space. Think about the conditions in outer space and how those might affect your oxygen or the jar. And even though you can't go to outer space, you can imagine some things that might happen as a result of your jar being out there. This is how Albert Einstein and Isaac Newton and other scientists have done some of their best work. So now you've got two lines of thinking you can begin with and you can probably come up with others on your own. At this point I'd like you to pause the video, just hit the pause button, and is brainstorm what you could do with your jar here on Earth that might help you figure out some answers to the question. And also think about what would happen to this jar in outer space based on what you already know about oxygen, about jars, and also what you know about outer space. So go ahead and pause the video now, and when you come back, when you've brainstormed some thoughts, we'll move on from there. I cannot actually take my jar into outer space, but I did some experiments here on Earth that I'm going to share with you. For example, when I put my jar in the freezer, I noticed that the safety button is no longer popped up. It actually went back down as if the jar had been vacuum sealed once more. If I hold my jar underwater, I don't see any bubbles coming up. This shows me that little or no oxygen is leaking out. I also tried to think about the conditions in outer space and what I already know about my jar and its contents. So first of all, I thought about oxygen inside the jar. Now I know that oxygen is a gas. I also know that a gas will basically fill up any space that's available to it. I also thought about the internal pressure on this jar. And now the pressure is going to be determined by different factors, such as the number of molecules in the jar. Remember that these molecules are bouncing around inside the jar and they're striking the edges of the jar and the more molecules we have the more collisions will take place and therefore the more pressure there will be on the jar. Also the heat which is really just the speed of the molecules is important as well. The faster these molecules are moving the more frequently they'll collide and also the more force will be in each collision. But let's look at how these things will affect the jar in space. Now the two big issues that I would think about the most in outer space are temperature and pressure. Now recall that we've got this outward pressure in every direction against the edges of the jar coming from all the oxygen molecules moving around. I would assume that on Earth the pressure on the outside of the jar would be equal. However, in outer space there's just space. There are no molecules pushing towards the jar, which means the only pressure we have is the outward pressure. And this is a very uneven pressure. If the jar is strong enough to handle it, then this jar could just keep flowing in outer space forever. There are two other possibilities. The most likely scenario is that oxygen will leak out underneath the lid where the seal might be weak. Another more tragic event would be if the jar just cracks and breaks and all the oxygen dissipates into space. Another issue to consider is temperature. Now remember we've got oxygen in the form of a gas and the oxygen is constantly moving around. However, space can be very, very cold. And as we lose heat from the jar, as it radiates out, let me draw some heat radiate out here. Some heat radiates out from the jar, and that means the molecules inside of the jar will be moving less and less. As this happens, eventually the gas oxygen will turn into liquid. And when you have liquid oxygen, the pressure will drop dramatically. At this point, the jar could just float through space indefinitely with liquid oxygen in its place and nothing else. 
However, that's still not the end of the story. Imagine we've got a bright, bright star like the sun shining here and sending its heat waves down to the jar. This heat would cause the liquid oxygen to heat up. It would start to move around and pretty soon it would be gas again. And now I have all these gas molecules and if they got really hot, the pressure might increase to the point that the jar cracks. Another possibility is that the heat from the sun or other radiation could just break the jar. Actually, I see three possible outcomes. Either we lose the oxygen through the seal, the jar is somehow destroyed, or this entire system floats through outer space indefinitely, forever. These are not the only possible answers. I've never taken a jar of oxygen to outer space, so what do I know? However, hopefully I've given you a framework to, to start exploring questions that seem unexplorable. For example, you can always ask yourself, what can I do? What sorts of experiments can you carry out? What kinds of models could you build that will imitate part, at least, of the topic you're studying? Another question to ask is, what do you already know about the, sub about the subject? And finally, look at the different possible outcomes, the possibilities, based on the first two questions you've asked. When you're exploring these three questions, you can get a lot of valuable insight into things that you can't explore directly as a scientist. Albert Einstein, for example, never was able to travel at the speed of light, and yet he found out a lot about the nature of the universe by asking these and similar questions. Keep on asking questions, and I'll see you next week.